Amen. Be seated for a moment. Tonight is probably going to be one of the most different messages I've preached maybe in a very long time or ever. uh, Because I'm actually going to use some video. Um, I really believe in the whole KISS method of keeping it simple. But tonight I have something to say. I don't just have to say something. I have something to say that needs to be said. But before we get started, I I have a couple of short things to share with you. One day a mother said to her son, Patrick, she says, how was school today, Patrick? This must have been in Ireland. Patrick replied, it was really great, mom. Today we made explosives. The mother said, oh, they do very fancy stuff with you these days. And what will you do in school tomorrow? And young Patrick said, what school? So a wife, a wife goes to a psychiatrist to consult about her husband. And she says to him, my husband is acting so weird. He drinks his morning coffee, then he goes and he eats the mug, and he only leaves the handle. And the psychiatrist says, yes, that is weird. The best part is the handle. You getting me? You getting it? All right, one more, one more. So a wife complains to her husband. Just look at the couple down the road. They are. He keeps holding her door, holding her hand, kissing her, holding the door for her. Why can't you do the same? And the husband responded, are you mad? I barely know that woman. So sometime between now and then, you guys might actually get those. So in John 8, Jesus makes this statement. He says, he says, I'm the light of the world. And if anybody walks with him, they will not walk in darkness. Right? John 8. But they will walk and they will have the light of life. And I promise I'm going to preach. And that's a little bit of the scripture that we're going to look at tonight. But the problem is this. The problem is this, is if he is the light and he is in us and we are in him and he is in the Father, that makes us the light of the world also. He says it later in the very next chapter. And so tonight, Before I even get into this, I want us to get our mind around an idea. Um, I recently heard Pastor Rick say this in another setting, and um, it makes total sense. Um, But, you know, sometimes you have to be reminded of things you already know. Basically, to paraphrase it, he said something like this. He said, Um, You and I and us and we are the redeeming agents of the world that we live in. That God's divine purpose for us is to change the world. I mean, that almost sounds like a superhero movie, doesn't it? You ever been to um, like Universal Studios? Every ride you go on, you're going to save the world. Um, You feel very accomplished at the end of the day. But the truth of the matter is, is that he's the savior of the world, but we're the ones that carry it. And the problem is, is oftentimes we, um, we don't go to the very places, or we don't even realize that the very places in which we dwell are the places that need the light of the world to be shown the most. 
I want you to look at this video that I'm going to show you. It's about, I don't know, um, maybe two minutes long or so. And um, I want you to grab, a, start to start to let your mind, it's okay, bring it down. It, to, to let your mind begin to wrap around the idea that we, you, us, me, are the light of the world. The truth is Jesus loves witches, he loves warlocks, he loves Satanists, he loves mediums and psychics, and he loves everyone. Uh, and we have to create some type of paradigm for them to encounter Jesus. What the f <laughs> <laughs> A lot of people who come to Salem are legitimately looking for something. People are looking uh, in many different ways for this supernatural experience. They're looking for something that is beyond the here and now because innate in them is something that tells them that there's more to life than what I'm just doing and what I'm seeing. God is relentless in His pursuit of people and He's so gentle and He's so caring and He's so loving and the Holy Spirit uh, will show up in power in the darkest and worst places. When Jesus left, he didn't give us a red light, but a green light. He didn't say stop, he said go. I saw like rankings, almost like in the military, like you were moving up. And uh, is that something that's going on? Like I see you moving up in the military. God's not like you thought he was. He's better than you thought he was. Do you believe in God? Do you believe that there's a God? Oh, I mean, I want, I want to believe that there is a God. witnessed was a short trailer to a film that was produced last fall and some of the people in that film are people that I know um, that are friends of ours um, in fact Justin Allen one of the the guy with the beard um, I talked with him the other day he may come here for a prophetic and do a prophetic conference here at mortal life next September for three days or two days and so um, but what you what you just witnessed is a is a trailer of a film of people who understood something. They understand that Jesus not only is he the light of the world, but he under they understood what Jesus said in the very next chapter of John chapter nine. Look at this with me. Look at this. This is so amazing. Starting in verse one. He said, and he passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? So this guy was born blind. Somebody is trying to identify, the, the, these people are trying to identify who is at fault for the man's blindness, his parents for the sin in their lives, or this man for the sin in his life? What was the result? What was the cause of his blindness? And, and because he was born that way. And Jesus said to them, he says, it was not this man or his parents, but that the works of God might be displayed in him. See, his blindness was a byproduct of the fall of man. It's the brokenness of humanity that his blindness was a byproduct of. But God decides to shine through the brokenness of humanity through a blind man. And watch what happens. He says, we, so that the works of God may, may be displayed in him, verse 3. Then verse 4 says, we must work the works of him who sent me while it is day because night is coming when no one can work so jesus is declaring that we must do the works of the one who sent jesus who is god the father 
So right now, what you have to understand is in John chapter 8, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. And if you walk with me, you don't walk in darkness, but you walk in the light of life, right? John chapter 8. And then we go into this next story where there's a blind man and everybody's wanting to know why is he that way? And Jesus is just about to transition. He is just about to transfer ownership of the light of the world. And he says, we must do the work of the one who sent us or sent me. Because there's going to come a time where we can't. And he says in verse 5, he says, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. So he's saying, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. So if we are to do the work of the one who sent me, you are now in my training program. That's what he's saying. That's what Jesus is saying to these people. And so in verse 6, he said, having saying these things, he did the obvious way to solve this man's problems. He spit on the ground. And he made mud with his spit. Then he anointed the, his eyes with the mud and said, go wash your eyes in the pool. And so he went and he came back seeing. See, what we need to understand, Jesus is making this statement. He's saying, when the light of the world enters into a place where there is darkness, darkness must leave. When the light of the world enters into a place that is darkness, darkness cannot exist. There's no way to turn on darkness. It's not possible. Darkness, once it's dark, it can never get more dark. But all you need to do is begin to turn on the light and darkness has to flee. There's no option. And where I live, I can sit in my living room and about 400 yards away, there's this little place where people gather to smoke cigarettes. And I cannot see at night who is sitting in that area, how long they've been there. But the moment they draw air through that cigarette, I can see the light. Because when light is produced, it doesn't matter how small it is, it changes the darkness around it. So Jesus is saying this. this. This is so cool, right? He's saying first in John 8, he says, I am the light of the world. And if you walk with me, you will walk in the light of life. Chapter 9, he's saying, while we're together, this blind guy and this example of what's going on, what I'm showing you is me doing what the Father sent me to do because I am preparing you to take the transference of the light of the world from me to you. This is what he's saying. And so we see this idea in Matthew chapter 5. I'm going to be short tonight because this is so good, but uh, it's, I don't have to be late, belabor the point. But we're going to get to it in a minute. Matthew chapter 5. Jesus is speaking to his disciples. And he says, you were the light of the world. Oh! John 8 and 9, he was identifying himself as the light of the world. And now he's saying, you, my disciple, those that follow me, those that walk in the light of life, you are the light of the world. He's telling them that as an individual. You are the light of the world. 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 And then what is he going to say? A city, which is what? A collection of lights is on a hill. Isn't it amazing? Isn't it amazing? A um, couple things that I really like. I love when you ever seen those satellite images of Florida at night and the light patterns. 
and how um, you you look at the coast and you start right about where we're at right now and you go all the way down to the Florida Keys and it is unbelievable how um, if I would have thought of it I would have put it up here for you to see how bright Google it Google images uh, nighttime satellite imagery of Florida it's fascinating they're they're so bright and and it's one big light and then all of a sudden you look out in the Everglades and there's nothing but what's amazing is if you look at it close you'll see an outpost you'll see you'll see a few lights together you'll see a small town or just a, a just a well, a little thing where and where there's lights together but what happens is you were the light of the world we are city on a hill there's a transference from the idea where Jesus says I'm the light of the world and if you walk with me you will not walk in darkness but you will walk in the light of life and the things that I'm doing is going to be the things that we're doing as long as I am here because I am the light of the world you're with me we're going to be doing what the father has established for me to do while we're here but there's going to come a point when I'm not here and you're the light of the world and so he goes on to say in verse 15 nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket but they put it out on a stand and it gives off light to the whole house so hear me you're the light of the world don't hide it don't hide it in the same way let your light shine before others so that they may see your look at this look at this this is so important your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. So your good works shine before others, and those good works give glory to the Father. What did he say in John 9? He said, he said that we must work the works of him who sent us. Good works. These two ideas do not run independent of each other. So when we talk here a lot, and and it's a it's a theme if you've listened to me preach many times or any times really it probably i won't go more than three messages without reminding you of matthew 10 where jesus said that if go and heal the sick cleanse the lepers raise the dead cast out devils this is our mission this is one of the things that he calls us to do these are the works that has been established that the father sent jesus that he transferred to us when he said, I'm the light of the world, and now he says, you're the light of the world. And in Matthew 5, when he says, let your light shine, when you do the works and give the glory to your Father who is in heaven, well, what are the works? See, here's the problem. Here's the problem. The things that I just mentioned are things that you cannot do in your own power, and you don't have the authority to do them. Their authority that has been given from on high, and it requires power from Jesus through the Holy Spirit. And so what we have done, what we have done is we've decided that, well, my good works, and don't get me wrong, because what I'm going to say I think is important. I, I think it's extraordinarily important. But my good works are going to be feeding people. My good works when I do things are going to be, uh, you know, Christmas season's coming up. There's tens of thousands of people packing up shoe boxes to send them to needy kids around the world. That's my good work. Well, that's not what Jesus did. When Jesus fed people, he did it in such a way where he took a couple sardines and some crackers and he fed 5,000 people. So when Jesus calls us to feed people, he's not calling us to do it if it's in our own strength. He's calling us to always be stepping out of our own ability. I'm not trying to like push down. What I'm trying to do is encourage you to understand if you understand the very person that God has created you to be, a child of the light, Stepping into darkness, that means he is equipping you to do things that are not within your own ability in and of themselves.
That's why when we looked at that video of which city, uh, Pastor Rick, you own that movie, don't you? Yeah, we should show it sometime. Um, those people, because they knew who they were, they were firm in who Jesus made them to be. They could walk into that environment, love people who, who have s- completely um, immersed themselves in a lifestyle of darkness and shine bright. There's a guy named Mahid El Shafi that I've looked at some of his stuff. He's in a movie that I watch periodically, and he makes this statement. He says, in the absence of light, darkness prevails. So if Jesus is the light of the world, and he tells us that the things that he does are the things that we're going to do, and he then transfers the light to us individually and then collectively, the thing that we need to understand is our lives should be reaching into the dark places. They should be reaching into that. Because remember a couple of weeks ago when we were doing life verses, I shared with you guys out of Ephesians 2, the verse that one of the verses that the Lord had really worked with me. Um, you know, it said that we are his workmanship, right? We are the poema of God, the workmanship of God. And that we were that we're not just saved by grace through faith, but we are his creation. And 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 in verse 9. He says, not by works that anyone can boast. Verse 10, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. And what I shared a few weeks ago was more about my attitude as the Lord shifted my thinking of doing things for God to doing things from God. That was a shift that I had to walk through. That was a shift where when I when I was doing things for God, I was constantly pissed off at people who weren't doing things for God as much as me. But when I realized that I shifted my thinking to doing things from God, because he's the light of the world, transferred his light to me, therefore I'm operating from him. I could care less what you do because everything I'm doing is an act of worship up unto him. And when my attitude gets salty, it's because I'm looking at you and not at him. Right? So when we go back to the same thought pattern, when we go back to the same thought pattern that he is the light of the world, but yet he transfers that light to us and collectively we are the city on a hill. What For what reason? What did he say in John chapter 9? So that the works that we do in front of man bring God glory. We were created for this. You were created for this. You were created to be a light before men to shine the glory of God in ways that you could not do for yourself because if you could do it in your own power, it's for the glory of you, not for the glory of God. So God is calling us, listen, God is calling us to be risk takers. 2019, my wife is going to croak when I say this, 2019 is going to be the year of risk for the Jolliker household. Seriously, we are going to go places we haven't been. We are going to give money we don't have. We are going to serve those who need to be served that we don't have the time to serve. We are going to reach into places that need to be reached into. And my children's lives are going to be impacted greatly. My wife's life is going to be impacted greatly. My life is going to be impacted greatly because I'm leading the way. Because we are the light of the world. Because we've been given that light by the Father of lights. So recently, okay, I'm going to take just a quick break from preaching. And now I'm going to hop up on a soapbox. (laughs) Recently, a, a contemporary Christian singer, worship leader, girl, lady, whatever, made an appearance on the Ellen DeGeneres show. And sang a song. Matter of fact, I want you to look at it. Show it to us, Sean. Our next guest has been compared to everyone from Adele to Amy Winehouse. Her new CD just debuted at number one. She's amazing. Here to perform Still Rolling Stones. Please welcome Lauren Daigle.
have to say, I was a long time ago, I was a judge on American Idol, and she was on the, the tiny season that I was on American Idol. And look at her now, uh. it, because of me. Thank you so much. Thank you, Al. Because of me. <laughs> The name of the CD is Look Up, Child. Everyone in the audience, you're going home with a copy. So I think that's amazing because Lauren Daigle was created as the poema of God, the workmanship of God to do good works that were established before him, before her, that all she had to do was walk in. But you know what's happened? This is amazing. Since the appearance that she made on that show, she has come under intense scrutiny from the church. Intense scrutiny from the church and people like Todd Freer, Freel of Wretched Radio. That guy's head is so far up his own keister, he has no idea that this woman was given an opportunity to be the light of the world in the front of the entire world to show the goodness of God, to sing about the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, and how he's resurrecting dead people, a woman who is um, agnostic, I believe, practicing lesbian, is handing out Christian CDs, putting it in front of the world to be seen. This is, the, this is the, what it means to be the light of the world. So if you hear a loud popping sound, that's probably John MacArthur pulling Todd Friel's head out of his own butt. Because we are the light of the world. <clears throat> to me, when I see that God creates a way for his gospel to be declared in such a venue, we should celebrate it. Because God doesn't call us to hate those who believe different than us. He calls us to love them. And as the light of the world shines through us, it shines on them. So in James chapter 1, verse 17, James writes, he says, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above coming from the Father of Lights. With whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Of his own, we will be brought, of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. This passage of scripture is verifying the very idea of the transference of from Jesus being the light of the world to us being the light of the world. What did it what did it say that everything that is good comes from heaven and is comes from the what? Father of lights. And we are a kind of first fruit. That means then, we're, therefore, we are produced by the Father of lights as children of light. For what purpose? To be released into the world. And so, oftentimes, when these kind of messages are, are preached, they're kind of like this. Go to your workplace and be the light of Jesus. Yeah, do that. Do that. Yeah, that's good. Do that. You have a sphere of influence that do that. But it, the truth of the matter is it should be everywhere you go. Because everywhere we go is darkness. And if our light isn't shining in such a way, why do you think Peter called, told us that we were a peculiar people? It means we should be noticed. Not just for the sake of being weird 
but for the sake of stepping in to the work as workmanship of the Father, stepping into the good works that he's established before us. So what is those good works? Well, they are feed the hungry, care for the widow and the orphan, heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out devils, love the grieving, rejoice with those who have victory, right? Because we love to always talk about being there to, to stay with those that are um, grieve with those that grieve. But you know what? That's important. But I love, I'm, I'm, I'm really getting into a place in my life where I love to celebrate with those who celebrate. Well, the problem is, is we, we, uh, if, if we make a conscious effort to celebrate your, each other's um, victory, Guess what we don't do is we don't get into a place where we're like, well, why are they getting that and I'm not? Because if you, if you have victory and I celebrate with you, guess what? It's my victory. That's good preaching, Pastor Lee. Well, thank you. <laughs> Tonight's message brought to you by a cross between Bill Johnson and Mark Sharona. <sighs> oh. But you know, I I think my point is this is we're made for so much more than just merely existing. You have a destiny. A really um, powerful destiny to shine the light of Christ, you know. And I've preached this before, and I've and I've been corrected and rebuked that we're like the moon; we reflect God, right? That's what the moon does. He's the sun; we're the moon, and we reflect Him. I've been rebuked by people who are smarter than I am, and um, and reminded that. And I, there's only like three or four of them in the world, but. Um, if I am in him and he is in me and he is in the Father, therefore I'm in the Father, why would I reflect something that's in me? I don't reflect him. I shine him. You shouldn't reflect him. You should shine him. God has a purpose for you, and that is to be a light source. Of the goodness of God. To represent him. Well. And when I say you. I mean me. And I mean we. And therefore us. So I'm a light of the world. And we are a city on a hill. Collectively. We can be seen from long ways away. Individually. We can light up everywhere we go. And the Lord is calling us to do things that are beyond our own ability. I'm really praying that 2019 for you individually and for us collectively will be a year of risk. And we're going to do things um, that don't make sense. Um, You know, when we were at the VOA, Rip Will Hart, I'm, I'm going to finish here in a second, I promise. Will Hart talked about how he hates every December all these prophets start talking about the word of the year. <laughs> and all the words of the year talk about multiplication and, and blessings and this and that. He says, you ever notice that the prophetic word of the year never has anything, never requires any, anything from you? It's always about a blessing or something. He says, I hate those. Well, I've always hated them too, but I never voiced it until I heard him say the same thing. Well, you know what? I think that the word of the year for me for 2019 um, is risk, taking risk. Because a light that is kept under a basket just so that it barely stays lit um, doesn't really do anything. 
anybody any good. And so here's what we're going to do tonight. Here's what we're going to do. Um, we're going to pray. And we're going to see what the Lord wants to do in your life. Instead of um, having people, a prayer team come and pray with people, what I want to do is I just want you to seek the Lord. I want you to seek the Lord. If we don't ever do anything here but teach you how to hear and discern the voice of God, and that's all we ever do, um, we've done well. Everything else is just icing. Um, but the Lord is calling us to shine. The Bible's full of it. He's the light of the world, and if we walk in him, we will walk in the life, light, life of light, or the light of life. He is the light of the world, and when we are here, we are to be doing the works that he's put before us. We are the light of the world. For what reason? So that when we do things, it brings glory to the Father. He is the Father of lights, and we are a first fruit. We are his children. We are the very things that he is looking to spread that very light through this world. So we're not Lauren Daigles who are going to be invited to do that on national television. But everywhere you go, you can shine. You can go and touch with compassion and healing. Everywhere you go. He's not here tonight, but I love Brandon Brecht. Anytime he sees somebody that's sick or hurting, he prays for them and like 80% of the time they're healed. It's crazy. This kid has such an amazing healing anointing. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. Everybody he touches is healed. Well, that's a light. And then he's got this crap-eating grin that he always is doing. I just want to slap it off his face sometime. Just wishing he was in a bad mood sometimes like I am. Smiling all the time. Well, if I was praying for 80% of the people that were getting healed, I'd be smiling all the time too. <laughs> No, I love him. So we're going to pray. And if the Lord is speaking anything to you, what I want you to do is obey it. It's really simple. He speaks it, you do it. He tells you what to do, you do it. No big moment. Somebody asked me the other day, how do I, how do I, uh, what do I have to give over to the Lord or ask the Lord to help me do whatever? And I'm like, just do it. You know, I ask the Lord for a power, and then when he gives me the power, then I want to ask him what to do with it. Just do it. Whatever it is, just do it. It's really simple. As a matter of fact, Jesus said, get out of the boat. He didn't say, ask me, pray, pray as every step you take. He said, get out of the boat. Right? And so... Just close your eyes, put your hands on your heart. Lord, I thank you, Father, for how you are calling us to be the light of the world. Lord, I thank you, Father, how you are not calling us to simply reflect who you are, but you're calling us to shine the very glory of your person. Lord, I pray, Father, now, and I impart a, uh, just a, a desire to walk in the supernatural, which is your natural. To walk in the supernatural, to take risks, to do things that only can happen when you're there to catch us as we shine your glory. So, Lord, we thank you for your goodness. And we ask, Lord, that tonight we leave this place changed by your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. Go in peace.